there and welcome to the next or the current edition of the Dental Practice Fixers podcast. I'm excited to be with you today. We've got a lot of great listener questions, our mystery shopper calls, something, a cool event you need to know about, and lots of other stuff. So let's get right down to it. I am Dr. Richard Maddow. I'm co-founder of the Maddow Center for Dental Practice Success, and I'm your host on the Dental Practice Fixers podcast. While inflation and dentistry How's this current inflationary period affecting us in our practices? Uh, Certainly our overheads have gone up because the price of everything has gone up. And maybe our patients are a little more squeamish about spending money. And we certainly don't want to raise our fees right now. So how do we handle this hyperinflationary period? Well, that's a great listener question we have today. I'm going to be talking about that and lots of other good, good, good stuff. So let's start with... um, something. Actually, on the last episode, if you remember, I did my mystery shopper calls to Canadian offices just to see if it's true that they're more polite in Canada. Well, maybe they were, but they certainly weren't any better at asking for the appointment than we are here in the U.S. But something I observed is that when they quoted a crown fee, they always said plus lab, which I was curious about. And um, I actually got a letter from many listeners in Canada, an email, not letters, who sends letters today? I got emails from many listeners in Canada about that comment I made. So I'll just read you one. It says, hi, Rich. In Canada, A, we submit crowns, dentures, et cetera, by dentist professional fee plus the actual lab cost. And usually have to send a copy of the invoice to the insurance. It's not just one combined fee like in the good old US of A. Funny, the insurance will pay their portion up to a maximum allowed fee so we can at least pick a lab on quality and not on price. Cheers. And that's from our friend Gord Morris, Dr. Gord Morris in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. One of my favorite Gordons of Canada, of course, Gordon Lightfoot being the other. Um, So I got a bunch of emails that had a similar sentiment, but I like the way Gord phrased it. He said, we can at least pick a lab on quality and not on price. So it sounds like in Canada, the lab fee is kind of a separate entity from the crown, which is really interesting. Um, You know, people talk about bundling fees, separating fees, and how in other professions it's different. Well, now we know in other countries it's different. In Canada, they build a lab fee separately. I, I got to tell you, I saw a vet bill, um, and it's just unbelievable how the veterinarians unbundle everything. They charge for an anesthesia. They charge for the syringe. They charge for medication. They charge for everything. And as you know, they do that in hospitals as well. I mean, could you imagine if we could charge for a, a carpule of anesthetic and charge for the needle and charge for the syringe and sterilization and charge for um, bonding agent and all this stuff? It will be nuts. So why can't we do this? Physicians do it. Hospitals do it. Veterinarians do it. Sometimes I feel like we get no respect, but that's the way it is. So we've got to do our best. With I, I, I don't think that's a system that we'll be able to change, certainly not in the next few years. Uh, maybe if somebody wants to put some effort into that, go wild. So um, great comment from Dr. Gord Morris in Edmonton, Alberta, and many, many other Canadian friends who chimed in. So I thank all of our listeners in Canada. We actually have listeners all over the world, but it's, I, I see a little like listener map. It's just sporadic here and there, but we have many listeners in Canada. So um, thanks so much to all of you. Okay, here's another great question. I got that says, can you do a seminar or a webinar about how dentists can survive this current hyperinflation? And that's from a doctor in Northern Virginia. Um, great topic, certainly something that's on everybody's minds these days. Here's my answer to that. And I'll just say at the risk of sounding old school, I'm going to say this. And that is, in my dental career, which has been a long dental career. I graduated dental school in 1984, did my GPR and finished 1985, then came out and had a bunch of uh, horrible associateships before starting my own practice. So I've seen a lot. And I'll say that in my in my long, I was going to say distinguished, but I guess that's up for other people to determine. But in, in my long dental career, I witnessed a ton of crises um, you know, or perceived crises, the, the takeover by corporate dentistry, the shopping mall dentist, that was the big thing when I got out of dental school. Um, the early days of AIDS slash HIV, which was a crazy time in dentistry. I mean, nobody knew what was going to happen. Um, so that was quite quite a, a, an episode. Um, the 2008 recession, uh, real estate stock market crashes, COVID, of course, and now, of course, hyperinflation. 
Um, you know, the answer how to strategize or cope with any of these crises is, is actually pretty much the same. Um, first of all, it's important to realize that all of these things are either temporary or cyclical, or they will eventually become the new normal. Ugh, the new normal. I can't believe I just said that. I hate that phrase. I have a pet peeve against that phrase, the new normal. I cannot, I, maybe it'd be a good name for a band. I don't know, but I don't like that phrase for one reason or another, but I said it anyway. So all of these crises, some horrible, some maybe in our imagination, um, you know, COVID and inflation and, and uh, HIV and all these things certainly were not in our imagination. But I think all these crises are going to be either temporary, cyclical, or become the dreaded phrase, the new normal. So the best strategy is it's what to do, what we should be doing anyway. You know, it's treat your patients and your team really, really well. Interact with your patients in a way that generates high treatment plan acceptance and referrals and, and you know, patients doing things we want them to do, showing up, paying all those great things. Um, do a great exam and diagnosis. That's so important. Get paid, no payment plans. Keep your overhead as low as you can and provide an experience that your patients just can't find anywhere else. And, and you know, there might be some reluctance to spend right now by some people, absolutely. But I'm going to say, um, you know, and, and our expenses could be outpacing uh, you know, any kind of inflation we've had in the last 20 years or so, all these things are the reality. But but my tip is kind of a long way around of saying, don't panic, keep doing things the way that they should be done. Or if you're not doing things the way they should be done, learn how to improve them. And then when everything normalizes, which it will eventually, you will be in great shape. And you won't necessarily be in bad shape now. Sure, your profits might be down a little bit as a percentage of your total revenues. But we got to just continue to grow, continue to learn, continue to do everything we can to treat our patients well, to speak to them and act around them like the way that we'd all want to be treated. I mean, these are the basic tenets of practice management that I've been teaching for 30 plus years, and nothing is different now. Nothing is different. You know, it's amazing. Um, we did a survey recently through our email database, which if you're not on our email list, please get on our email list. Just go to matto.com and sign up for our emails. But we did a survey of, you know, what are things that are troubling you that are on your mind right now, your biggest issues in your dental practice. And, uh, you know, a huge amount of dentists said that they're still kind of recovering from the COVID crisis. And, and you know, it's just, it, it's, there's quite a dichotomy because some of the practices we're working with are experiencing their best years ever. So I think we have to stop blaming things outside forces and do an incredible job in our practices. And yeah, we might not have the greatest month or six months or greatest year we've ever had in our careers, but we will do well, we will earn a profit and we will be better poised for the future. So, wow, that was my long-winded way of saying, keep doing everything right. And if you're not doing everything right, learn how to do everything right and you will be fine. Okay, great question. Um, so I, I really appreciate that question. Here's another question. This one says, I have a question about phone coverage on the day that the office is closed. Dr. Rich, I've heard you several times recommend that the phone be answered at all times and have even recommended paying someone to sit in the office on days that we are closed. We are frequently closed on Wednesdays and Fridays, and it will be a significant expense to pay for office coverage for those days. You also often speak about watching overhead carefully, so I think the suggestion may be a bit hypocritical from Dr. Luke in Minnesota. Hypocritical? I will try not to take offense to that. <laughs> hypocritical? Maybe uh, maybe the two things don't jive with one another, but hypocritical? Wow, that's quite a strong word. Anyway, I don't care. You can call me anything you like. I, I'm not easily offended, but Dr. Luke, it's a great question. I do frequently talk about having the phones covered even when you're not there, mainly with the theme of the phone should be answered every single time it rings during normal business hours, which whatever your definition, Monday through Friday, eight to five. And that includes lunchtime. That includes if you're too busy seeing other patients, I can't stand that BS. And it also includes if your office is closed for the day. And Dr. Luke is lucky enough to be able to close on many Wednesdays and Fridays. So congratulations on that. Are you with me, Dr. Luke? Or that, no, that's Dr. Wu. Anyway, so you're saying, is it a um, justifiable expense to pay someone to babysit the phones 
when your office is closed. And, you know, in my office, I had actually somebody who used to work at the front desk in my office. Sometimes it was an assistant, too. Um, both of these great ladies had retired, and they weren't busy every single day. And they would love to come back to the office and sit there and get paid and answer the phone when around. You know, occasionally a patient would straggle in for one reason or another, or they could file charts back in the days of filing charts, you know, whatever it was. But um, they enjoy doing that. So I'm going to suggest, first of all, there's a great pool of people out there who will do it, uh, maybe retired, former former dental office employees and the like. They're pretty easy to find. So let's just say that you're paying this person $22 an hour. So that's 176 bucks to sit there during an eight-hour day. Um, if you're closed one and a half days a week, that's $264 a week. You're paying someone to babysit the phones. So I've seen various studies on the worth of a new patient. Some people say that over the course of their lifetime, a new patient's worth between $1,500 and $2,000. Uh, my favorite study, and I think the most accurate one, was the one done by 1-800-DENTIST several years ago, where they actually tallied up the amount of treatment that a typical new patient gets. Now, this is everything from a one-time emergency all the way to a full mouth reconstruction. But they also counted patients that that new patient refer to your practice because without patient A, you wouldn't have had patients B, C, and D that they referred. I thought it was a really interesting way to do it. And when they did that survey that way, they found that on the average, this is counting all new patients in your practice, a new patient over their lifetime is worth about $10,000 to your practice. Now, that's the highest figure I've ever seen. I've seen figures, you know, again, starting at 1,000, 1,200, 1,500, whatever it is. So we're talking about $264 per week. If you get one new patient, if you get half a new patient, that scary half new patient, it is well worth the expense. It is a super positive return on investment. So yes, Dr. Luke, I'm a big fan of watching your overhead, but I'm also a big fan of not um, pinching pennies and, and losing dollars in the meantime. So it's absolutely worthwhile to pay someone to babysit, not a great term, but you know what I mean, to sit in your office or have the phone forwarded or however you want to do it. I'm not a huge fan of answering services only because I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of them in theory, but I'm not a huge fan of them in practice because I've seen so many just horrible ones that didn't know what they were doing. So if you have a great one, that's cool. But it's worth the expense, whether it's forwarding to a cell phone of a team member and paying them, having someone sit in the office, have, finding a really, really competent answering service, however you want to score it. As long as that person is capable of pulling up your schedule and appointing new patients, it's worth it. Okay, great question. Let's do another one. This one says, Dr. Matto, I'm somewhat enjoying the podcast. Somewhat? Thanks so much. I love that. Oh, these are great. I'm somewhat enjoying the podcast, but sometimes it seems like you were just winging it. It might be better if it had more structure. Just a suggestion. And that is from Dr. Anil. Oh, Dr. Anil in, uh, whoa, in Naperville, Illinois. Oh, one of my favorite places, Naperville, Illinois. Very cool suburb of Chicago. So you're saying that you think I'm just winging it? What are you talking about? And you prefer a little structure? Well, Dr. Anil, you are correct much of the time. I do make this very informal. You know, my, my goal with the podcast, whether it's me kind of spieling to you or reviewing the mystery shopper calls or answering um, emails from listeners like I'm doing today, it's to feel like, you know, let's just say you just went to a dental seminar and you sat for an hour, four hours, eight hours. And let's face it, dental seminars are fairly scripted. But then afterwards, you're in like the hotel lobby or the hotel bar and you see the speaker and you sit there and you just have an informal chit chat for 15 or 20 minutes. I'd say most of the time that learning session will be more valuable than the actual seminar you attended. So that's what I like to have these podcasts be like an informal session. It's just you and me. We're chit-chatting with one another. Um, it's not scripted. Yes, I totally agree. So that's that's kind of the vibe I'm going for. Um, and, and this brings up another topic. I know that a lot of the dental practice management consultants talk about scripting. Here's your script for when a new patient calls. Here's your script for when a patient asks about payment. And I'm not not a fan of that because I know you have to be organized. You have to be calibrated as I so frequently talk about. But the problem I see is that so often um, dentists and team members take scripting as robotically memorizing a script and reciting it word for word and sounding like a computer. So yes, things should be organized. But if you sound like you're reading a script all the time, patients can sense it. They don't like it. So 
I like the informality of this. So, so great, great question or suggestion or criticism or whatever you want to call it. So that's my explanation there. Hopefully that appeals to you. Keep listening, please keep listening. And please, this was a fun episode of reading all these emails. Send me an email. Our mystery shopper calls today actually revolve around an email. So you can reach me at rich, R-I-C-H, at matto.com. Hey, a couple things, and then we're going to get to our mystery shopper calls. One is, speaking of emails, I continue to get incredible and great valuable feedback about Stacks. As you know, they are my favorite credit card processor because they don't charge that overage percentage, just a flat monthly fee. We use them at the Matto Center, and you should use them in your practice as well. Just go to matto.com slash save and start instantly saving on your credit card processing. The, the switch is seamless. I say it goes on autopilot because you make this call, things easily get set up, and then boom, as they used to say in the infomercials, set it and forget it. You'll save money every single month without lifting a finger because you'll be paying a low monthly fee and not that nasty overage percentage. That's why we've been using Stacks at the Matto Center for many years now. So go to matto.com slash save. Also, we have a cool event coming up in Baltimore, Maryland, the home headquarters of the Matto Center. It's on Friday, June 3rd. It's called our master class. And these master classes are where a very small group of dentists, and you're allowed to bring one person too. So oftentimes it's a spouse, a significant other, an office manager, whatever. Um, small group, we sit around and we talk about your practice. We brainstorm, we solve problems. Members of our coaching team are there. Um, again, we typically have maybe four to eight dentists. It's a super, super small group. Um, one's coming up June 3rd at our world headquarters in Baltimore, Maryland. They are no charge, but you need to be a practice owning dentist. Uh, if you want to get more information, see what it's all about, just go to matto.com slash improve because these undoubtedly improve your practice. Many people say it was the best day they ever spent in dentistry and the best move they ever made. So go to matto.com slash improve, I M P R. OV. I'm actually spelling improve. What's this world coming to? You can find out more about the masterclass, matter.com slash improve. Okay, let's start moving over to Command Central for today's mystery shopper calls based on a listener email. It says, Dr. Rich, recently we had a caller ask if we were comfortable treating elderly patients. Using the techniques I learned on the podcast, I immediately appointed both the elderly patient and her son who was calling on her behalf. They're both now great patients and two other family members have scheduled. Thanks so much. This might be a good idea for a future mystery shopper call. Signed, Janine in Boca Raton, Florida. Well, wow, if you're in South Florida, you better be good at treating elderly patients. Anyway, Janine, I'm so glad that you used the techniques you learned on the Fixers podcast to appoint that elderly patient, her son, and now two more family members. Congratulations. I am taking your idea seriously. So on this week's Mystery Shopper Calls, I'm going to pose, I'm going to pose as a person who's making a call on behalf of their elderly mom and wants to see if this practice is good at treating elderly patients. So without any further ado, let's hit it up. Mystery Shopper Call number one. Dental, this is Evie. How may I help you? Hey, Evie, do you see um, elderly patients there? Uh, yes, we do. Okay, so I'm calling like on behalf of my mom. She's 87 and she uses a walker. And I just want to know if you'd be able to accommodate her and like what other things you could do to help someone be more comfortable if they're that age and, and need a bunch of dental treatment. You know, we've got a bunch of different things. We've got different pillows and blankets and we can adjust the chair to, mm -hmm. you know, to help her uh, feel more comfortable. We do see a fair amount of elderly patients. Mm hmm Good, good, good. Not, yeah. Not too many? No, we see a fair amount, but not if they're um, wheel, wheel, wheelchair bound. That's a different story. Oh, we I would understand. Need, uh, a family, we would need a family member in here to help us lift the patient into the chair. Mm -hmm. But Walker, she's okay. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Great. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Oh, man, she couldn't wait to hang up on me. You're welcome. Bye-bye. It's kind of like when you're leaving the flight, you know, the plane and all the flight attendants are going, bye-bye, bye-bye, bye-bye. Get out of here so we can get the next group in. Bye-bye, bye-bye. I mean, she was relatively nice. She said, we don't see people in wheelchairs unless she can help. I mean, 
Uh, that was a little negative. But in general, she said, yeah, we see elderly patients all the time. That'll be great. Now, why am I calling? Just to be goofing around? No, I'm calling because I want my mom to be seen in your practice. She made zero, zero attempt to even mention that the next step will be to make an appointment. Ah, let's move on. That was bad. Bad, bad, bad. Thank you for calling. Can you hold, please? Oh, sure. Thank you. I love that start with, can you hold, please? Just a beautiful way to start a call. Oh, horrible, wonderful music. Actually, I was on hold for over two minutes with this office. I was ready to hang up, but I wanted to see how they would come back. So um, I'm going to ask our great, great editor and producer, Rory, to cut out most of this on hold stuff. After I finish talking, we can go right to the call. But take my word for it. I don't want to torture you. It was over two minutes of on hold music. Okay, let's see what happens when she picks up. Thank you for holding. How may I help you? Oh, yeah, I was calling to see if um, you see elderly patients there. You know, it's a funny thing that you're asking because it's we hilarious. do. hilarious, yeah. We, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> we do, but our elevator is broken at this time, and they just told us just now that it's going to take months to repair it. Wow. Why and is it going to so, take so long? Because it's broken. It's a hundred year old uh, elevator and it's broken and the parts are very hard to come by. And I believe that they're going to have to replace it. So we're not even sure when it's going to be fixed. Okay. So assuming that this elderly patient I'm referring to can't walk steps very well, then the answer would be no, huh? Right, but we do have a sister office that's over off of Speedway and Wilmot. Mm -hmm. They will be glad to see her. Um, would you like their number? Sure, that would be great. Okay, so the area code is... Mm -hmm. And where is that located? It's on... It's on the corner. The, I think it's the southwest corner of... Oh, Southwest. Okay, I'll get my compass. All right. Um, great. Thank well, thank you so much. All righty. You're welcome. Okay, bye. Oh, man. I mean, she was kind of nice, but I'll tell you what she did. She made an assumption. She made an assumption that this patient cannot walk steps and needs the elevator. Now, could it be true? Yeah, you're talking about an elderly person. Maybe 50, 60, 70% of the time is true. But why assume? Why not ask? We'd love to see her. Is she able to walk steps? I mean, I just don't get it. And let's take that as a general lesson, not to make assumptions about anything, anything, because you know what happens when you assume, right? Don't we all know that? Okay, let's move on. Let's call. And plus the whole time, it's horrendous. Thank you for calling dentistry. This is me. May I put you on a brief hold? Oh, sure. Thank you. Another hold. What is going on here? Am I, is putting somebody on hold recommended today? Just a horrible way to start a call. I know it happens, but let's try to avoid this Thank if at all possible. Thank you for holding. We'll be right with you. No, you won't. Trusted office. We're dedicated to creating generations of healthier, happier smiles by offering safe, high-quality care with proven technology and flexible financing options. We use advanced technology like digital x-rays for safer and more accurate results and CEREC CAD CAM technology for a beautiful, long-lasting, same-day crown. We respect your time. and Thank you for holding. This is Lupita. How can I help you? Uh -huh. Do you see um, elderly patients there? We do. Uh -huh. So I, I was, I'm calling on behalf of my mom. She's 87. I know she needs a bunch of treatment. So like if she's on a walker, that's no problem. Yeah, no, that's fine. And are there some other things you do to make a, a older person more comfortable? Um, at well, as in what? Oh, I don't know. I know that you know sometimes they have trouble um, laying back for long periods of time and staying open, those kinds of things. I just want to know if you're, you know, familiar with with treating people like that. Yeah, we do. We have many, many patients of older than at that age as well. Mm -hmm. Got it. 
Great. Well, thank you so, so much. You're welcome. Did you okay. want to schedule her an appointment or? Let me let me check with her and I'll get back to you. But okay. thanks so thanks so much for offering the appointment. I really appreciate it. Yes, of course. Have a great day. You too. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay, she actually offered to make an appointment. That's a great way to end the show. So I just want to remind you, um, we've got our masterclass coming up June third in Baltimore. Go to mado.com, m-a-d-o-w.com slash improve to check that out. And uh, thanks for listening, viewing, whatever you're doing. I am Dr. Richard Matto, co-founder of the Matto Center for Dental Practice Success. You can find more about us at matto.com. Send me an email, rich, R-I-C-H, at matto.com, and I will see you soon. Thanks. Bye.